And so let's get started. Uh, my name is Jason Barnes, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer here at Genesis Chiropractic Software. But today we're talking about more than chiropractic. That's the goal of today is to discuss other than just what we can do for chiropractors, provide some guidance for many of those uh, practices who ask us, hey, how, if I wanted to add any sort of services, can I go about doing so? And they really fall into two categories. And, and we're gonna talk about those today in this brief presentation. But I, I put up here, is the juice worth the squeeze? And over the years, we probably had, you know, maybe 300 providers who have asked us about adding different specialties to their practice, but they chose not to do so. And why is it? Because after they go through the process and they kind of sift through the promises of somebody who says, if you use this laser, you can get reimbursed, or if you use this uh, new technique, you can do this, or if you have a massage therapist that also has acupuncture licensing, you can get reimbursed X number of dollars. When you look at all of that, you have to take into consideration potential business, the patient base that you already have, the marketing that you are already doing, and is it going to work for your practice? Is it going to actually be an investment worth making? And as we explore those questions today, I want to give you a lot to think about. Um, if you're already set on bringing another discipline into your office, today we'll actually go over how we can make the juice more worth the squeeze. I don't think that's how the saying goes, but I'd like to use it for today. So thanks for joining us today, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to going over this in, in some more depth. So adding additional specialties to your practice. Uh, First thing I want you to consider is we have people that bring things into their office that are not congruent with the things that they're already doing. If you're a chiropractor and you're a pain-based doctor and really helping people get better is what you do, then it might not be congruent with some of the other services that you want to bring in. But if there is a, a situation that you're a wellness-based doctor and you don't want to deal with anybody who's not in it for long-term care, then there's some other specialties that would really fit what you're looking to do. So you have to understand what your philosophy is first, because if you're going to put a round peg into a square hole, I've seen it happen time after time that you keep expecting something different to happen than will actually happen. And I can uh, cite some frustration uh, of a few of those doctors that started out with us that didn't actually get what they were looking for. So. If allergy testing is something you're looking into because you really think it can help your patients, but you're a pain-based practice, you might want to think twice about how you're actually going to deliver this to a demographic, demographic of people that doesn't really fit what it is you're looking to, to do to bring revenue and actually help people. So if you plan on bringing another stream of patients in and you've got a model and a plan that would support that, then forge right ahead. All right. So keep those things in mind uh, as you're going about this. We've seen too many people make mistakes, but on the flip side, we've seen people make wonderful decisions that have helped their patients get better, make more referrals, and bring added revenue into the, uh, into the office. So prepping for it. How are you gonna get paid for the new services that you're gonna bring in? Right? Whether or not you're gonna bring in an MD, or a nurse practitioner, a physician's assistant, and you're gonna start doing trigger point injections, or whether or not you just want to bring in some weight loss and figure out how you're actually going to have your patients in your wellness-based practice take advantage of excellent nutrition advice and a support group and an accountability group that will really help those patients achieve the goals that you already have through your chiropractic principles. How are you going to get paid for that? What, who is and isn't going to pay? And I'd like to talk for a moment about how we, Genesis, can actually help you determine whether or not these services are reimbursable, whether or not anyone in our network is already taking advantage of this approach and perhaps even in your, your own space. So if you're considering bringing additional specialties on board and you're wondering 
just sitting there and Google's not helping you because insurance companies don't allow information on the web that actually is helpful, you can get some real information, not all the time, but much of the time about services that you want to bring in and see whether or not they are reimbursable or not reimbursable. Okay. And if you're looking for one type of service, you might be able to get some additional information on other types of services. Oops. So as we continue down this particular road in preparation, right, if you know what codes you're looking to bill or you need some help, we can work together on those types of things. But you can then start to model out whether or not this is going to be profitable for you. But if you do determine that it's something that you want to do and the potential is there for your practice and your patient base, what's next? Well, a lot of our doctors forge ahead without having a solid plan uh, about how they can set themselves up to accurately bill. And this next part is, is getting started. Everybody here who owns a corporation has a group MPI number. You needed that group MPI number. But when you started that group MPI number, how was it classified with NPPES? Uh, and in this situation, you have to consider that. If you're a chiropractic office and you're gonna bill out medical codes, can you get paid for that? So you might have to upgrade or change or even add an additional MPI with a new tax ID number. Are you going to then link all of the associate doctors that you're already employing and any new clinicians to those MPI numbers? These are things that we've seen time and time again are steps that are missed. And what does it really lead to? We have, we discover that, you know, hey, you hired a new clinician after the fact, and that's not a problem. We're going to help you with that. However, you are now seeing patients. You are now potentially working for free because you're not reimbursable yet. The, the groundwork hasn't been done. The prep work hasn't been done in order for you to get paid. Your best case scenario is that your payment's delayed. Your worst case scenario is you actually do work for free until you get some approval letters from the payers that you're trying to, to work with. And then finally, credentialing. So the credentialing that we're talking about here is uh, you bring in an associate doctor who was never a Blue Cross Blue Shield recognized uh, clinician. They have to fill out the paperwork and actually get recognized first as a clinician, and then you have to link them. This can take time. It's not an overnight process. And in the meantime, reimbursements are going to be delayed while that person is treating yet can't get paid. So these are the types of prep work that you want to do in conjunction with your plan so that you can actually bill when that clinician starts seeing patients. So you want to boost the revenue, you want to help the patients with additional services, it's a win-win situation, but the frustration can be hefty if you don't do the prep work appropriately. <clears throat> so you, you want to offer new services that'll actually help your patients. Why is it so hard? You just, you, you want to grow a practice that is financially viable so you can help the most people possible. The reason your MPI number that you set up is associated with a specialty is just another way to make life a little bit harder. And so you might have to run two separate tax IDs at the same time. So keep that in mind that you might have to have two separate patient accounts, you know, one for chiropractic, one for medical. With Genesis, we can offer a way that you don't have to do that. You can offer two, three, seven tax IDs, seven, in, you know, group MPIs if you need to, and keep a single patient account, keep a single patient ledger, and, and keep all of your patient accounting in the same place while keeping your liability and compliance segregated to the point where you can actually manage it. So whether or not you can actually build those codes, I already uh, alluded to this, we can help. But finding information out there on the web can be challenging and finding trustworthy information can, can be even more daunting. So whether or not there's actually reimbursement coming from those codes, we can also help confirm that while you're going about your inquiry to expanding the services offered in your practice. So work with us, ask us questions um, about the expansion plans that you have so that we can offer some insight to those who've already forged paths 
uh, and we can do so anonymously. So if you're in Massachusetts and you're thinking about adding additional services, we have lots of providers already in Massachusetts who do this. We can offer anonymized information that lets you know what is or isn't happening uh, with those codes um, and do an apples to apples comparison in or out of network. But then you actually have to think this last question here, number four, how will I schedule document track? How will I actually pull this off? Because it's a good idea in theory to bring this into your office, but managing it is the next step. That can't be something that's disproportionate to the amount of time that you're already spending managing your practice, which for every practice owner that I've spoken to up to this point has always been how they've prepped. Okay, I'm seeing 500 visits a week. I'm only spending three hours a week actually managing all of this. And you think adding another service will bring a proportionate amount of management time. I hate to burst anyone's bubble. That has not been the case from what I can see. If you set it up properly, though, you can get pretty close to that same exact uh, ratio of time spent managing your practice versus actually working in your practice. However, the investment at the beginning can be substantial. So understanding whether or not this is going to be a clinician that's going to have a mixture of cash and insurance, just cash or insurance, is something you need to do first, right? You have to then weigh out what it is that you, you think you can do in a volume. How many patients are going to go for this? If not as many patients go for it, what sort of buffer am I going to have against cash flow problems, especially in the beginning when you get up and running? And you have to weigh that against the cost of the clinician, the new equipment, et cetera. All right. What does a care plan value look like? So this is where we like to, to help. If you're bringing in a new service, trigger point injections, right? Certain medications, you got your lidocaines where it's a five shot series, let's just say that you're looking to do. And we know in your state that these five shot series in or out of network is X number of dollars per visit and the evaluations, et cetera, we can help you forecast what the patient value is going to be so that you can appropriately assess what type of compensation is going to be fair and realistic for the clinicians that you bring in to help in this particular place. So keep, keep that in mind as you're planning for the success of these clinicians. We can be helpful in, in helping you put together what a care plan is supposed to look like, all right? Now, there's weighing out what that care plan cost is going to look like in conjunction with your current services. And I'm really excited to talk about and actually demonstrate some of the things that we've added to the system in the last six months that are gonna allow you to create and actually manage care plans by specialty or as a whole if you choose to. But adding that clinician requires even more set up than what you can imagine right now when you're just looking at one specialty because now there are a lot of other decisions that you have to make as far as settings within the Genesis system that are intended to actually help you. So like what? Well, I said it in the beginning when we were talking about this, how are you actually going to manage the businesses? You have another clinician, is he going to is he or she going to be under your original tax ID? Are you setting up an additional tax ID? And how are you going to keep the business accounting separate? So we can actually show you, and I'll show you an example here in a second, of how you can keep your existing tax ID and MPI, put a new tax ID NPI, all within the same account that you have right now, and then manage that pretty much how you're managing your current practice except for the need to schedule additional visits and make sure that clinicians are billing out. Uh, with the same tools that you already have. And that workflow design is really where you spend most of your time setting this up so that the management of this new practice actually makes sense to you, your staff, and there's clarity from top to bottom as to who does what and why. So how are those patients going to get uh, scheduled? If somebody's coming in for two, three visits at the same time, how are we going to make sure they get all checked in, rescheduled if they need to? If there were no-shows, how do we make sure there's not four no-shows notifications as opposed to just one no-show notification? These are things that we've thought about, some pain that we've already felt because we didn't think about it well enough, and then we, we forged ahead. We can use our experience to help you add these 
specialties to your practice. So we'll get over there in just one second. Now, setting up the practice. So we're going to make a recommendation 99% of the time, if you're going to have more than one specialty, that you're going to have one patient account and that we use our mapping systems on the back end to make sure that you can have the group NPI for Blue Cross Blue Shield be out of network and then have the um, one of your associate clinicians, regardless of their specialty, be in network. And we can make sure the claims get processed correctly, uh, at least from the submission standpoint. If anyone out there is uh, rolling their eyes, I can tell you, especially with the example that I chose of Blue Cross Blue Shield, that when we submit a claim that states very clearly that it's in network with a group MPI number that's out of network, that the claims can be misprocessed, yet we won't stop fighting for you to make sure that they do it correctly. So keeping those configurations in your practice can really be really useful to attract the most patients possible, all right? So if you do choose to have separate accounts, keep in mind that a web-based system like ours allows you to have a single sign-on, manage multiple accounts all at once, and we can show you that in just a second. And then we can configure all the clinicians, the fee schedules, the in or out of network based on the individuals versus the business, making sure that we have allowed amount management. So if somebody has a contract that's separate from the office, we can set up separate fee schedules and set up separate allowed amounts to make sure that underpayments are detected immediately so that the office doesn't suffer for more than they have to when an insurance company uh, elects and be very clear, chooses to, to underpay uh, for services that they should be paying more for. Most importantly though, we have the ability to automate when something doesn't go as planned. So the 4C here, the KX modifier as an example, so many of our practices who see Medicare patients have physical therapy specialties within their office. Now, chiropractic care plans, 36, 60 visits, not unheard of at all. And if they come in for physical therapy services that go over the Medicare cap and the modifier to allow reimbursement over that cap is used, which is the KX modifier, how do we know when we've reached that limit? How are you going to track it? Well, this is just one of the examples of the rule sets that are already built into the system that tell the clinician, hey, you've reached the cap here. Are you sure you have medical necessity enough to keep billing for Medicare? And it even allows you to model comparisons with, with other clinicians to see, you know, for the same types of diagnosis codes, what are the lengths of time that are, are patients being seen uh, before they're discharged from acute care. So keep that in mind as you're going about this. There's a low likelihood when you have one specialty under your roof that you can memory manage everything in your practice. As you increase the level of complexity by going to a multidisciplinary practice, it's not a linear growth of the complexity and management requirements. It's exponential. So without really grasping and utilizing the automation available in a system like ours, you, I see very few clinicians able to be truly prosperous with that. I have run into some superhuman clinicians who can really memory manage quite a bit. However, I still ask the question, why would you want to? So, you know, our, our, our practices who see a lot of personal injury, no fault, uh, et cetera, billing limits are one of those big examples that you can use. You know, after a certain dollar amount, you know it has to go to major med. You know, how do you want to manage that? So we can help with that. So in this uh, scenario, we want to, to help every single practice owner make the decision that's right for them. And setting up the workflow is a big part of that. Do you want separate patient, patient accounting, meaning separate patient accounts? Do you want separate accounts in general so that one tax ID doesn't bleed into the next? All of this leads to questions with workflow design. So if you have a one account within the Genesis system for practice A and a separate account for practice B, patient A and patient B, 
even though they're the same patient, they're not going to see or talk to each other. They're going to have two ledgers within the system. We have lots of practices where this is the preferred way of doing things. It's not the recommended way, but if that's how they feel most comfortable and they really want for compliance reasons, we've got a great provider down in Texas right now who is getting set up with us and, and is starting to do some real experimental stuff, but it's exciting stuff. And it's an all cash uh, practice. And the rest of his insurance-based chiropractic practice, he wants completely and totally separate. He doesn't want anything to do with one another. And so he prefers separate. So this is one of those situations where we are uh, just happy to accommodate because his goals are so clear. If your goals aren't clear about how you want to do it, this is where I implore you to meet with us, talk with us, and see how we can help you get set up so that your practice has clear workflow and you know exactly how to manage patient expectations. You're going to get two separate statements. Or, yes, you've got seven specialties under one roof here, but it's all under a master practice here, and you're going to get one statement with what your care plan is, one statement with what your patient responsibility is going to be for that care plan, et cetera. So, and if you're going to have, oops, if you're going to have uh, a single patient account though with multiple specialties, how are you going to know when the PT re-exam, the MD re-exam, the chiropractic re-exam need to be done? We're able to set those up by specialty, making sure that you're able to program when you need to the rules for all of your patients one time so that they apply all the time. What's so good about that? Having to create, I, I recently talked to a practice that created 1,055 individual alerts over the last 12 months for patients with balances. They had 2,300 patients with balances, so they missed 1,200 patients. And they ha still had to do the work 1,055 times for the patients that they, they actually did speak to. Uh, when I you know, let them know that they could have created one rule that would apply to all the patients, it would save them a whole bunch of work and be a blanket that fully covered every single patient scenario. This is the ideal practice that we're trying to help you build where you can do less work, get notified the right way, and actually have less things that fall through the cracks. So we can put together sets of rules to make sure that no patient walks through your door and slips through the cracks uh, of your policies and procedures, which make your practice what it's supposed to be. So, and then there's the practice management. And guys, I, I didn't put anything underneath here, but this ranges from reordering stock to all of the tracking that needs to be done for discharges, all of the staff tasks that need to be done, you know, front desk staff, office manager staff, associate uh, clinician staff. We have to make sure that the work assigned to them actually is done, and we help you do that from top to bottom. We do that, and this is a real magic of the system, by having you only look at a couple of places to make sure that the particular backlogs of work that needs to be done is driven to zero. You don't have to remember to go to 25 different places. It's just two a claims workbench, and a provider task workbench. And then finally, reporting. The ability to slice and dice any data that you need to to diagnose your practice and see where the subluxation is so that it can be fixed. All right. So we break down what the needs are. So if you look at documentation needs, if you have one specialty in your practice right now, you don't really have documentation threads, meaning you don't have a thread of PT, a thread of chiropractic, a thread of MD, a thread of massage, a thread of weight loss documentation. You basically have one documentation tab. It's got just your chiropractic in it, and that's all you need. However, how do you make sure that when a patient checks in that their, the previous note that comes up for the PT is in the chiropractic note. We have settings for that to make sure that the previous CPT diagnosis and well, those codes, as well as the documentation that shows up, is the previous note from either that clinician or that specialty based on how you want to set it up. There is no more searching for the right stuff. We can automate this so that the patient comes and checks into your treatment area 
and you're ready to rock and roll with almost no doubt whatsoever that you've got the right stuff in front of you. For all of those Medicare patients that you need to have, you know, outcome assessment tools for, we pretty much have all of those in the system. They're ready to go. They're ready to be shared with you. They're ready for you to fill out. They're ready for you to send to patients in a patient portal so that they can have this stuff filled out prior to the, the actual visit so that you're ready to go with, you know, the neck disability index filled out or the, the DASH, the SF36, uh, the Oswestry forms. They're all there. They're ready for you to, to utilize. You don't have to go somewhere else to find them. And then all the exam forms that you would ever need for personal injury, auto accidents, uh, et cetera, no fault, so that you out of the box can get up and running. Now, some clinicians might look at it and say, it's not perfect. Maybe it's not perfect for your practice as is. Use it. Over time, we might be able to, to actually customize those things so they're a little bit uh, more specific to your practice. But I've said this to clinicians time and time again, nobody wants to practice the same as somebody else. So creating truly universal documentation is, is a tall order, but come check out what we've got. You'll be happy you did. So last thing about this uh, workflow design continuation here is that patient accounting. The ability to look at a roster, or excuse me, a patient ledger and say, here's your total balance. Here's your balance by chiropractic, by physical therapy, by weight loss. The ability to do this is where we really excel. We've got the capacity to help you track all of these things separately, see which visits are and are not getting paid correctly so that your conversation with patients is much more clear. Your ability to articulate their financial burden or accomplishment is, is a much more straightforward task. Now, what I am describing, though, is a big system. It's got a lot of moving parts to it. And so... We want to make sure that you feel comfortable, and that will take some training. It will take some time getting used to, but it will take an investment on your part to do this. And so we ask to set proper expectations with you have to sit down and you have to go, actually go through this. So finally, in that workflow design, setting up the care plans, and that's one of the things I've already done a separate webinar just on that. Uh, the release of our multi-specialty care plans allows you to set up financial agreements for each portion, making sure that each visit is billed out with the right charges and the right patient responsibility is allocated to it so you can stay as compliant as you possibly can. Bottom line of all this, it's an investment anytime you want to bring somebody on. There's extra costs and there are actual costs and there's opportunity costs, but the potential benefits have to be weighed out. And don't fall prey to the idea that you can go and bring another specialty on in your practice without understanding that managing it is not something you want to invest in after the fact. It's something you want to invest in before the fact because that's where the returns are made. Doing it after the fact is going to leave you uh, in a situation where I know because I've talked to the doctors who are in the frustration uh, level, I thought I'd be making more money. I, I thought it would reimburse more. I thought this would be easier. It is totally doable. Many of your predecessors have done it. They've done it with us, and we've done it successfully. What's so good about that? You get to learn from those people that have gone before you, and frankly, some of the mistakes we've made as well, so that we can help you be the best practice that you can be for the, the patients in your community, which we know need you so badly. So that's the presentation for today. And I very much uh, would love to answer questions on the how-to for any of this. I didn't make that a part of the presentation on purpose. But if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in right now. And uh, I'll be here for the next few minutes to actually answer them. Thank you so much. All right. Well, there are no other questions. I am going to end the conference in just about a minute here. All right. Thank you, everyone, for their time. And I hope you have a great, safe week. Be well.